Now we're live. It works okay. Go ahead again. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our sort of nine o'clock live stream. Thanks for hanging with us. We were having some technical difficulties this morning, getting everything uh, going in the right place. So um, again, thanks for hanging in there. It is the sixth Sunday in the season of Easter. Glad that you're joining us for this, uh, this live stream. This will also be posted later on at uh, YouTube. So if you're watching it later, uh, welcome to you as well. Hope you had a chance to download the worship bulletin so that you can follow along and sing with us. Uh, this is meant to be participatory, not something you just watch as a passive audience, but as something that you participate in. That's what uh, worship is all about. Our worship begins now as we confess our sin together and hear God's word of forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Dear friends, in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please join with us as we sing together, Dearest Jesus, at your word. Draw 
was holy up to heaven. All our knowledge, sense, and sight lie in deepest darkness shrouded, till your Spirit breaks the night, filling us with light unclouded. All good thoughts and all good living come by your gracious giving. Radiance of God's glory bright, light of light from darkness shrouding. Jesus and your blessed light, help our hearing speaking heeding, that our prayers and songs may please you, as with grateful hearts we praise you. Father, Son, and truly most, praise to you and adoration. Just what we need the most, all our gospel's consolation. Are we here on earth await you, dealing and with grace we greet you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my father and you in me and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my father and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. We are going to sing Welcome Child of God as we get ready for the children's message. I hope that you'll sing along. Raindrops, oceans, lakes, and rivers, welcome child of God. Mothers, fathers, Brothers, sisters, welcome, child of God. When the world feels wide around you, when the dark of night surrounds you, we are here to tend and guide you. Welcome, child of God. Good morning, boys and girls. Thanks for listening in for the children's message today. It's, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you in person. It's a um, joy to have you joining us in this way online. <clears throat> As you know, I am sure, sometimes mom and dad have to go places and they have to leave you behind. Maybe they both need to go to work or maybe they need to go somewhere to run some errands or maybe mom and dad are going out for a date night. That's important that they do that once in a while. It's important that they go out and have some fun without you. Uh, that's uh, important for their, their marriage. So sometimes mom and dad have to go somewhere and 
leave you behind. But does that mean that they don't love you? Of course not. I hope you never think that. That would be a silly thing to think that that's not what it means at all. And when they do leave you behind to go somewhere, do they just stick you in a closet until they come back? I sure hope not. I really doubt it. Do they just put you out in the backyard with the dog? I doubt that's true too. Uh, instead, they leave you with someone that they trust. I know your parents. I know your family. So I know this is true. They leave you with someone that they trust. Maybe that's a grandparent or another relative. Maybe it's a family friend. Maybe it's a babysitter that they know well. They leave you with someone that will care for you and protect you until they can get back, right? That's how that works. In our gospel reading for this morning, Jesus is getting ready to leave the disciples. He needs to leave them for a bit, uh, but he wants them to know that he still loves them. He's not leaving them because he doesn't love them anymore. He doesn't want them to think that at all. So he assures them of his love, and he also wants them to know that he is not leaving them alone. Jesus says, I am sending you the advocate. That's not a word a lot of you kids have probably used before. Uh, but an advocate is like a comforter and a counselor, someone who comes alongside you. Uh, I think you could also say that an advocate is a, a babysitter of sorts. And this advocate, this babysitter, this comforter and counselor is the Holy Spirit. Jesus is sending the disciples the Holy Spirit to care for them and to protect them while he's gone. Jesus describes this spirit as the spirit of truth because the spirit is constantly pointing the disciples to the truth of Jesus' love and his presence and his promises. Well, Jesus isn't here in person with us either in the sense that we can't see him with our eyes, we can't touch him with our hands, but Jesus has not left us alone either. Jesus is with us through the Holy Spirit that he sends to us. And this Holy Spirit is constantly reminding us of the truth of the gospel, the truth of Jesus' love, the truth that Jesus is with us today and forever. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thanks for listening, boys and girls. Have a great week. All right, grown-ups, it's your turn. So grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm reading a book right now. I'm almost done with it now. It's a book. The title is Lost Connections, and it's by a writer named Johan Hari. And this book is about why people experience depression and anxiety. It's a book that was recommended to me by a pastor that I know as a way to help us as pastors understand why people sometimes fall into depression or anxiety. The author acknowledges that brain chemistry is responsible for some instances of depression or anxiety, but he argues in the book that the vastly more common cause of these maladies are what he calls these lost connections. He argues that depression and disconnection go hand in hand. And there's lots of different kinds of disconnections that people experience. So the chapter titles go like this. There's a chapter called Disconnection from Other People, Disconnection from Meaningful Work, Disconnection from a Hopeful or Secure Future. And there's more and more and more of these disconnections in, in these different chapters. Now, this book was recommended to me and I started reading it before this pandemic hit but I'm finding that it is more relevant than ever before. Of course, the virus, COVID-19, is bad enough. It's something that we all should be taking seriously. But it is also at the same time true that the mitigation efforts that we are undergoing have all kinds of their own problems. They're creating all kinds of these lost connections in people's lives. We are disconnected from other people. This is increasingly difficult for just about everyone, but it is especially difficult for those who live alone. It's especially difficult for children with special needs who are regressing now because they're not having the contact, the social interaction that they, that they need to, to uh, progress. 
This is particularly hard on nursing home residents who we especially need to keep quarantined, but it's hard on them, especially those with uh, dementia. Uh, their lack of social contact is really causing their dementia to advance because they're not having those interactions that they need to stay healthy. So we're disconnected from other people and it's having a big impact on many, many folks. A lot of people are disconnected from work of any sort, let alone meaningful work. 36 million people have filed for unemployment just since this pandemic began and the unemployment rate is now pushing 15%. With so much that is unknown about the future, unknown about how the virus is going to behave, unknown uh, treatments and vaccines in the works, when are they gonna become available? It's all unknown. When are we gonna start to open up? When do we might maybe need to lock, continue to lock down? There's so much uncertainty out there. There's so much that we don't know that just about everybody is feeling a disconnection from a sense of a secure or hopeful future. The virus is bad enough by itself, but if Hari is at all correct in his assessment of things, we are going to be in for a tidal wave of depression and anxiety in the weeks ahead. Mental health workers are already warning us of this. So I found this book to be very helpful. I found it very convincing. I found it to be a fascinating read. It's really a page turner given the subject matter. Uh, you wouldn't think a book like that would keep you gripped, but really uh, I've had a hard time putting it down. But as great as this book is, there's one glaring omission in it. It is a secular book by a secular writer. He's got a lot of wisdom and a lot of things to learn from, but it is a secular book. And so there is no mention at all of our connection with God. It's a pretty big omission, right? In our gospel reading for today, we return to the upper room where Jesus is preparing his disciples for all that is to come. We are still in the Easter season, but this reading is kind of a flashback scene. It happens before Jesus' death and resurrection. And Jesus is promising his disciples here that although it will seem like he has gone away, they will not lose their connection to him. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, Jesus says, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This advocate, the word is paraclete in Greek, is a very hard word to translate. Uh, at its most literal, basic sense, it means someone who comes to your side. Uh, in certain contexts in which this word has been used in ancient Greek, uh, it has kind of a legal connotation to it. So sometimes it can be thought of as a defense attorney, or I've talked about it as being sort of like a guardian ad litem in juvenile court, someone who stands up and represents the interests of the minor in the case. Uh, this word is sometimes translated as comforter or as counselor. There's lots of different words that are used to translate what this advocate is, what the paraclete means. Jesus goes on to describe the advocate as the spirit of truth. Jesus says, you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. The connection with Jesus will be maintained through this advocate, through this paraclete, through this spirit, through the spirit of truth, which is always pointing to the truth of the gospel just always pointing to the promise that Jesus will be with us forever. Jesus goes on to say, I will not leave you orphaned. It's a powerful thing to say just before Jesus is about to go and die. I will not leave you orphaned. Jesus is going to die for the sins of the world, theirs, yours, mine. But he says he will not leave them Orphaned. He will not leave them to fend for themselves like childless or like parentless children. I am coming to you, Jesus says. The world won't see you, but uh, you will. Or the world won't see me, but you will, sorry. Because I live, Jesus says, you will live. So even death, Jesus says, will not cause a lost connection between us and him. But Jesus isn't done yet. On that day, you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you, 
Jesus says. You can see why I'm stumbling because there's just all these words <laughs> put together, right? Uh, but there's so much promise here. Uh, Jesus says that we will be in him and he will be in us and we'll be all be joined to the Father. Those who love me, Jesus says, will be loved by my Father and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Such a wonderful promise here. No disconnection at all. That's the point here. No disconnection at all. We are disconnected from so very much right now as the people of God. We are disconnected from each other, only able to interact through screens or through car windows if you come to one of our drive-in services or through phone calls perhaps. We are disconnected from the liturgical practices that have formed and fed our faith. We are disconnected from our voices being joined together in song we're disconnected from so much right now. But make no mistake about it. We are not disconnected from our Lord Jesus. He sends us the advocate, the paraclete. He sends us this spirit of truth to come alongside us as a comforter and as a counselor. This spirit abides with us, maintaining our connection with God by turning our eyes to scripture and our hearts to prayer and our hands to loving service to one another. This spirit abides with us, filling us with a love that moves us to joyfully and willingly keep our Lord's commandments. We are disconnected from a lot, but we are not disconnected from Christ. I will not leave you orphaned, he says. We might be isolated, but we are never alone. We're disconnected from a lot, but we are not disconnected from God. I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. There's no social distancing going on here, no disconnection at all. We are united with God in love through Jesus. Those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them, Jesus says. We are disconnected from a lot right now. And if you are feeling depressed or anxious, or maybe you're just starting to experience quarantine fatigue, I think that's a lot of us, I hope that you will reach out. Know that I am here for you. Know that your brothers and sisters in Christ are here for you. Know that the Lord Jesus is here for you. In fact, he comes alongside us even now through that spirit of truth to assure us of his presence, to fill us with his life, to strengthen us in his love. We're disconnected from a lot, but we are never disconnected from a hopeful and secure future because our Lord Jesus has sent us the advocate, the comforter, the counselor who comes to our side and abides with us forever. Thanks be to God. Amen. All right, we are going to sing once again. Hope that you'll join us on Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Oh, 
invite you to join me now as we confess our faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all in any need. I invite you to join me in prayer. Lord Jesus, we pray for your church throughout the world. Come to your people through the power of your spirit. Fill us with fervent love for you, that we would joyfully keep your commandments. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for your world. As people of every nation suffer with this global pandemic, we pray for leaders as they make difficult decisions about the way forward. Give them your wisdom. We pray for hospital workers and medical researchers. Bless their work. Bring healing and hope to all lands and peoples. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. God of all compassion, we pray for those who are suffering most, for those experiencing depression or anxiety, for those who are unemployed, for those who are feeling lonely or hopeless, for those who are sick, dying, or grieving. Come alongside all in any need so they would know your presence and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Life-giving God, we give thanks for our brothers and sisters who are celebrating birthdays this week, including Margaret Anderson, Brian Culbertson, Marion Christensen, Kendall Gibbons, Heidi Hogarth, David Rydell, Pete Peterson, and Sharon Erickson. With these friends, we rejoice in your gift of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you established the covenant of marriage and you continue to sustain it with your steadfast love. We pray for those who are celebrating wedding anniversaries this week, including Pastor Mark and Sue Stroud celebrating their 41st anniversary and for Bill and Mary Warner celebrating their 50th. Continue to bind these couples together joyfully as one. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, sustain our congregation during this time when we are distanced from one another. Hasten the day when we can gather safely in our sanctuary to sing and pray together. In the meantime, open our ears to your great promise that you will never leave us orphaned or alone. Send your spirit to be our comforter and our counselor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up our prayers to you, O God, trusting your promise to hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share the peace with one another in the comment section there on Facebook. Maybe we'll have some peace passers come stick their face in the camera and say hi. Say peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. <laughs> Good morning. God's peace be with you all. Peace be with you. And you. Peace to you. <laughs> All right, a few announcements to share with you this morning. Uh, we do not have a virtual coffee hour this morning. Uh, just logistically, I'm finding that hard to pull off when I have the drive-in service and need to break down from that, and then I need to get to work pretty quickly getting the starting the video uploading so it's on uh, and available for people. Uh, I would like to see that continue, though. So if you have Zoom and would like to take that on as a ministry and be the host of that, I'll pop in and say hi at the fellowship time when I can. Uh, but I just don't have the time or logistics to to host it. So if you're interested in hosting our virtual fellowship time, let me know, and I'll um, help you uh, manage that and get it started. But no virtual coffee hour this week, but maybe somebody will take that on and we can offer it next week. We continue our Bible study on Philippians. We're in chapter 3 this week. There was a misprint in the email that I sent out. That's entirely my fault. I was working from a template and didn't get that part changed. But uh, as those who have been in the study know, we're in chapter three this week. It's not too late to join us. Each chapter is rich with stuff to talk about. So we'd love to have you. If you've already been part of it, you'll receive another invitation for that Zoom meeting for Bible study. If you'd like to join us, let me know so I can put you on the list. That is Tuesday at 7 p.m. Uh, once again, I wanted to uh, encourage you to take up the May challenge for Oak Harbor Lutheran Church. It is so important that we try to maintain kind of the fabric of our congregation to stay connected to one another as a community. So I'm encouraging everybody in this church to call three people, at least three people from the church directory. It doesn't even have to be somebody that you know. Uh, just call someone that uh, is in our church directory, say hi, check in on them, see how they're doing. And uh, also, I encourage you to close that conversation by praying together the Lord's Prayer to help not only the communal or relational connection, but also the spiritual connection. So make those three calls, have a conversation, check in on each other, and pray together the Lord's Prayer. Uh, there's so much that we are unable to do. So much has been taken from us during this season, but there's a lot that we can do. And I'm convinced increasingly that this is an opportunity for us to 
refocus our attention on some things that maybe we've neglected. And some people maybe are uncomfortable praying the Lord's Prayer with somebody over the phone, but you shouldn't be. There's no reason to be. Uh, and maybe this is an opportunity for you to grow uh, spiritually and to be more bold and brave in, pray, in prayer and in praying with others specifically. So there's your May challenge once again. All right, those are the announcements. Uh, it's time for the offering, so I will pass the plate around. Thank you for the extra effort you're making in getting those offerings into us. It is much appreciated and helps to keep us on stable footing uh, financially here as a congregation. So thank you so much for your attention to that. We will conclude our service now by praying together the Lord's Prayer. I invite you to join me as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.